Hello guys, uh, welcome to another video and uh, here we are going to move forward with our discussion on kinematics. So in our previous video, we have seen that uh, if you know the position vector R of a body, then you can find its velocity by differentiating the position vector with respect to time or you can find its acceleration by differentiating the velocity with respect to time which is the same as differentiating the position with respect to time twice right but now let's say you are driving a car Okay. This is your uh, x axis, right? And this is your origin. And uh, let's say you are driving a car. So this is your car. Right? And you are driving a car with some acceleration A. Okay. And I ask you. Uh, if at time t equal to 0, you were at the origin, right? Then what will be the value of x? Since this car is moving forward, it would have moved somewhere, right? So let's say at some time t equal to t. Now t could be anything. It could be 1 minute, it could be 2 minutes or 1 hour, 2 hours. So t could be anything. Basically, at some later time, your car has moved to some x, right? x uh, x uh, prime let's say because i have named my coordinate x let's call it x prime so after some time t your car has moved to some uh, x x prime uh, right so if i uh, ask you what is the value of x prime at some later time how would you uh, tell me that basically now you know the acceleration and i am asking you for the position so if what if we wanted to work in the reverse direction? Now we know the acceleration and you have to tell me the position of the car at some later time. How would you find it? The answer is integration. And what is integration? Integration is just the opposite. of derivatives now this is just a uh, a fraction of the definition of integration we are going to look into uh, the uh, more de better definitions of integration but for now this definition uh, suffices so integration is just the opposite of a derivative what do i mean by this we know that the velocity is the derivative of the position right now what i can do is i can differentiate uh, uh sorry i can integrate uh with respect to time on both sides then how do we represent it, uh integration like this to integration dr upon dt of t. right now just uh, like how the derivative of the position vector gives you the velocity of that body. The integration of the velocity gives you the position vector, which means over here, uh, it would not be uh, correct for me to say that dt and dt gets cancelled, but in effect, uh, that is uh, true. So over here, what happens is, uh, uh, if you take the integration here, I have taken integration of v with respect to time. So if you take the integration of velocity, it gives you the position. With some constant, I'm going, I'm going to explain to you why that constant is present out there. So basically what you need to know over here is that the derivative of the position vector gives you uh, the velocity. And the integration of the velocity gives you the position vector. So you see how they are just the opposite of each other. 
the derivative of the position vector gives you the velocity and the integration of velocity gives you the position vector right and why do we have this constant uh, let's differentiate with respect to time again on both sides over here so you get d by dt of integral v dt right is equal to dr by dt plus that the derivative of a constant is a zero right since constant means this is constant constant in time that means it is not changing with respect to time right so it's a derivative with respect to time is going to be zero and over here we have already seen that derivative is just the opposite of integration so you first integrate velocity and then you take its a derivative then both you can uh, again it would be wrong mathematicians will say what i'm saying is wrong but in effect uh, uh, you can say that derivative cancels the integration so this derivative is going to cancel the integration and you will be just left with the velocity right is equal to dr upon dt and this is true right this is true and hence uh, it is kind of a proof that derivative is just the opposite of uh, integration and uh, here the constant also cancel that's why i had included the constant because at the end we are getting a correct expression so adding a constant just gives you the same expression and hence in general we have to include a constant right this constant just represents your initial condition so that is uh, at time t equal to 0 what was the position of that body it just represents that and we are going to look at that uh, soon right so now we are going to begin with our definition of uh, acceleration which is equal to the we know that acceleration is the time derivative of velocity right so in this equation now i'm going to do uh, the integration with respect to time on both sides of the equation so i will get integration a dt plus uh, sorry is equal to integration of dv upon dt of dt right and we have seen uh, above that that just gives you the velocity of that body with some constant right uh, now instead of having the question uh, constant what we can do is just uh, so use indefinite integrals instead of uh, sorry use the definite integrals instead of indefinite integrals these are known as indefinite integrals uh, for which you would get the constant of integration if you integrate this right but a better way i feel is to use definite integrals right where you directly substitute the initial values and the constants do not appear that c or this c will not appear if you use definite integrals right so how do you uh, represent definite integrals let's say over here at t equal to zero the velocity now here uh, both dt uh, and dt uh, will get cancelled in effect and so you will get integration of dv right so let's say at t equal to zero the velocity of that body was v naught now v naught is fixed right it is not changing with time v naught is not a function of time uh, which is uh, pure common sense because uh, your initial velocity at time t equal to zero let's say when your car when your car this car was at the origin its a velocity is equal to let's say two meters per second right then this two meters per second is just constant in time is it depending upon time no whatever your velocity at time t equal to zero was it just remains fixed in time right and hence uh, v naught we can just call it in general v naught right and substitute its value later depending upon the question 
and at time t equal to t right at some later time t equal to t here yeah, i have told you that t could be one minute or one hour it just can be any later time right let's say the velocity of the body is v now v is something which we want to find we want to find the velocity of the body at some later time t right now one rule of integration which you have to remember is that integration of x dx x to the power n dx is equal to x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 over here it is integration of 1 dv now how can you write a 1 you can write a 1 as 2v v to the power 0 can i write v to the power 0 anything to the power 0 is 1 so i can just write it v to the power 0 dv right and using this rule you have to do this will become integral v not to v v to the power 0 plus 1 divided by 0 plus 1 right because n is equal to 0 right dv we have already integrated so these would not appear right so we will get just uh, v to the power 0 plus 1 divided by v to the power 0 plus 1 from v naught to v so at time t equal to 0 it was v naught and at some later time it's still of this so what do we get 0 plus 1 is just 1 so you just get v divided by 1 right 0 plus 1 is 1 right so i will just get v from v naught to v now how to evaluate this you first substitute v instead of v right it would have been better if i call it uh, v prime right to avoid confusion uh, i'll just call it v prime to the power zero whether i call it v to the power zero or v prime to the power zero anything to the power zero is just one so i'll just i can just uh, call it anything and i'll just call it a v prime right so i will get a v prime over here right so instead of v prime first you have to substitute v so you you will get v over here minus uh instead of v prime then you substitute v naught so first you substitute v minus the lower limit this is called the upper limit and this is called the lower limit so first you substitute the upper limit and then minus the you substitute the lower limit so you will get v minus v naught is equal to what integration from 0 to t now here it is understood that this 0 to t i am uh, uh, referring to time because uh, this element this differential element dt it is with respect to time so the limits of the integration is also uh, representing time right so you get this equation call this equation one okay so this is our first equation another definition of which we know is of velocity and position as we have seen above right this one so we know that v is equal to dr upon dt again uh, integrating with respect to time on both sides i will get 0 to t v dt is equal to now again the dt dt will get cancelled in this manner over here if i just integrate it dr upon dt with respect to dt then again the dt dt goes uh, basically you are integrating the derivative so that derivative vanishes and what is left is integration of dr now let's say the position let's say let's consider the most general case the body didn't start at the origin but uh, your car at time t equal to zero 
let's say your car was uh, at some position r not let's say it was at 2 meters at t equal to 0 it is possible let's say the origin is here and your you have started your stopwatch let's say you are sitting with a stopwatch in the car and you have started your stopwatch when your car has already already reached 2 meters then your initial position is 2 meters which is r not which is again a constant with time right r not is not changing with time so your initial position is r not and let's say your final position is some r okay again you can substitute the upper and lower limit so this is one so as we have seen above what you can do over here is directly substitute the upper and lower limit so you get r by substituting the upper limit minus r not is equal to integral from 0 to t v dt now what is r minus r not if you look carefully and remember from my previous video the definition of displacement vector then this is just the final position of the body minus the initial position which is nothing but the displacement vector of that body right so we get the displacement vector is equal to integration from 0 to t v dt okay now from the equation 1 what you can do is uh, you can say that v from this equation you can see that v is equal to v not by right? taking v not on the other side of the equation taking v not on the other side we can we see that v is equal to v not plus integral 0 to t a dt right and if we now substitute this in this equation over here instead of v over here instead of v if we substitute this v then what do we get we get integral from 0 to t uh, what was v v not plus integral a dt so we have to substitute here v not plus integrals from 0 to t a dt right is equal to our displacement vector right so what is our displacement vector displacement vector would be uh, with respect to dt we have uh, taken the integral with respect to dt so similar to the derivative we can distribute the integral inside the bracket so we can apply the integral separately to these two terms right so what we get is integral from 0 to t v not dt plus integral 0 to t integral 0 to t a dt dt now as i've already told you that v not is a constant in time and just like in the case of derivative if anything is constant with respect to this the uh, we call it the differential element then uh, which is a uh, time here so and uh, v not is constant with time so we can just take it out of the integral so taking v not out of the integral we get v not from 0 to t dt plus integral of 0 to t integral of 0 to t a dt dt okay and now again this is one here so you just substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit so this will just become v not first you substitute t minus 0 plus integral 0 to t integral 0 to t a dt dt right so this becomes a v not t plus integral 0 to t integral 0 to t a dt dt is our displacement vector call this equation two okay so we have these two most important equation equation 2 and equation 
using which you can find the v right if you know v not and if you know how your acceleration is changing with time your x i have assumed uh which is the more general case actually there is no assumption here that acceleration is changing with respect to time right and over here too i have uh, said that acceleration is changing with respect to time so if you know how acceleration is changing with time you can find the displacement which is nothing but r minus r not if you remember so you can write in a better way r is equal to r not plus v not t plus integral 0 to t integral 0 to t a dt dt right so if you know the initial position of the body if you know the initial velocity of a body then you can find the acceleration oh sorry you can find the position of that body at some later time if you also know that how the acceleration of that body is changing with respect to time right so that was our goal if you remember i had asked you that if you know how the acceleration of the body is changing with time and if you know the initial and final initial velocity and initial position of that body it was your car right then you had to find the position of that car at some later time which we have just found now this was the most general case that is the case of changing acceleration if your acceleration is changing with respect to time but what if your acceleration is constant with time so we have to look into a special case of constant acceleration which means your acceleration is not changing with time your acceleration if at uh, time t equal to 0 right when your car where is our car here yeah. so at t equal to 0 uh, if our, if the acceleration of a car is uh, let's say 3 meters per second square then the acceleration of a car remains 3 meters per second square throughout our journey even at t equal to t our acceleration is just 3 meters per second square which means the acceleration is constant with respect to time it is not changing with time right so in that case uh, our equation 1 and 2 uh, will change okay or uh, more accurately our equation let's call this star right and our equation uh, this one double star is going to change uh not going to change but uh, basically uh, you'll get a special case so what we will get uh, from this equation double star we are going to get uh, r is equal to r not plus v not t these terms are going to remain the same but over here the acceleration is constant in time now so it will just come out of both the integrals because both the integrals are with respect to time and anything that does not change with time is going to come out of both the integrals right so here acceleration is not changing with time hence i am going to take it out of both the integrals so i will get a integral 0 to t integral 0 to t dt dt right so what do i get i get r not plus v not t plus a now over here uh this is just one right so again uh, you know that if you substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit here the lower limit is zero so you will get just get t 
We have uh, looked into this uh, previously. So you just get integral 0 to t of t dt. I have just solved this integral, this, the one inside, right? This one. I've just solved that integral. Okay. So I will get t from that integral. And after that, now if you solve this one, now this is t to the power 1, right? So again, applying our formula, which I have shown you before. What will I get? t to the power 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 from 0 to t, right? I have just applied, uh, where is that here? I just applied this formula, okay? So I will get integral uh, this one, the value of the integral. Uh, so I will get R naught plus uh, V naught T plus A into uh, T to the power 1 plus 1 is T squared divided by T from 0 to T. Now again, substitute this, substituting this one over here. And again, then substituting 0 instead of t, I will get substituting t instead of t will just give me t square and minus uh, the square of 0 is uh, 0. So I will get plus a, right? So substituting t instead of t will just give me t square by 2. Minus substituting 0 instead of t, I will get 0 square divided by 2. 0 square is just 0, so this term is 0, right? So what I will be left with is plus v naught t plus a t squared divided by t. Now this is equal to r position, right? Again, taking if I take r naught on the other side again, then I will get r minus r naught is equal to v naught t plus a t squared by 2. What is R minus R naught? R displacement factor is equal to V naught T. And uh, this is one of the most uh, popular equations uh, from high school, which you might remember, right? S is equal to uh, v naught uh, you call uh, sometimes as u, so s is equal to u t plus the half a t square, right? Uh, now uh, we are going to solve the star equation, this one. Okay, so what do you get from here? You will get v is equal to, we will get v is equal to v naught, Plus, again uh, over here, uh, A is just going to come out of this integral because it is constant with respect to time. So you will get A. So we will get A integral 0 to T. So this will become V naught plus A T. Right here, this is 1. So again, it should just become T. Again, one of the most popular equations from high school, right? So let me call this equation three and this one as equation four. Then uh, these are the most uh, popular equations from high school. This we again, I think we not as u. You must uh, remember that v is equal to u plus a t. And this is S is equal to V naught plus half A T square, right? So these are very popular equations from high school, but you should remember now that these equations apply only for constant acceleration. And this is very, very important. Do not apply this equation when the acceleration of the body is changing with respect to time. That would be a huge mistake. Okay, if your acceleration is changing with respect to time, then you have to use a double star and this star equation. You have to use these equations. This one, the star, add the double star 
if your acceleration of the body is changing with respect to time. Another thing which I wanted to mention in this video is that in our previous video, I have told you that dx by dt is a replace, was represented by Newton as x dot. Now, one thing which uh, I forgot to tell you and you should remember is that this representation is used only for time derivatives. That is only when you are differentiating with respect to time, you can put a dot on top of x. You can use this representation. You cannot use this if I have something like, let's say, dy by dx is equal to y dot. No, this is wrong. Okay, only when uh, dy by dt, you can write as y dot. This is correct. Because here you have differentiated with respect to time t. Right, so this representation is used only for time derivatives. So that's it, guys. Uh, in this video, I have uh, told you how uh, you can find the position of a body if you know how its acceleration is changing with respect to time, and you know its initial and initial velocities and positions. In our previous video, I have told you just the opposite. If you know knew the position, you could find the acceleration. And uh, thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.